This video is a follow-on from the Far Desert video, but it takes a closer look at the strategies used to reduce environmental damage, aka desertification, on the fringe of the Far Desert. That's quite a common word in that can be used in the exam. Is you know, using a, a an extreme environment or an area that you've studied uh, to discuss how the risks posed to the environment can be managed. Yeah. Also, because we look at desert, when we talk about risk to a desert, we're looking at the idea of desertification, the spread of the desert. And we've got to remember there are certain causes to that. Yeah. If we quickly look at those, obviously we have uh, some physical causes such as climate change. Okay. Temperatures are rising and in places precipitation levels are dropping. Okay. Which naturally is also going to cause an increase in the sort of scale of deserts and some deserts to spread. Now remember the far desert is spreading around half a kilometre per year. Um, so you know quite a rapid rate of desertification and that is causing huge amounts of environmental damage. Okay. Um, the desertification is primarily being caused by due to soil erosion. Okay. And that soil erosion comes down to normally, apart from this physical use, some also human problems or human causes. Okay. So things for example like overgrazing in the far desert traditionally due to the fact that so little vegetation grows a large number of uh, farmers are pastoral farmers they use uh, or they they basically rear cattle and goats etc but the problem is they are uh, just simply too great in numbers at the moment and as a result what they're doing is eating the crops okay or eating any plant like that does exist and then what happens to that plant dies its ability to provide shade to the soil to stop it drying out its ability to bind the soil together with its roots uh lee is basically lost and as a result the soil is very easily eroded we also see an issue of over cultivation okay where we're basically growing just simply too many crops in the far desert what that does is eventually leaves the soil nutrient poor and very little is able to grow in it. As a result of that, again, we have this problem that we lose that ability of the soil, of the plants to bind the soil together with their roots and protect it from drying out by shade. And again, the soil is easily eroded. On top of that, we also have over irrigation. Since the building of the Far Canal, uh, irrigation to parts of the land has been much, much higher. That allows people to water their crops, but if, over, if not managed properly, what we sometimes get is like a layer of water sitting on top of the soil. When that layer of water, as it will do in the hot conditions, evaporates, it then leaves a layer of salts. That layer of salts then prevent any crops growing up through the soil. And then what we actually see, in the same way as what we've seen before, again, if plants aren't growing, the soil becomes much more subject to soil erosion. So, what we've got to look at is how can we reduce this soil erosion? If desertification is being caused by increased rates of soil erosion, how can we stop that? There are three strategies in the main diagram, uh, one of those being tankers. I haven't put that on there because tankers is more about ensuring a water supply for people. It's not so concerned with the reduction of soil erosion. The first strategy we're going to look at are buns. You know, buns are these stone walls that can be built by hand by local people that are built perpendicular across the slope. Now, firstly, that's a pretty good advantage. They're very cheap to build and they can be built by local people, therefore creating employment. So straight away, we've got an advantage there. So if we put a little note over here, advantage, local people, and employment. Now, though that's great, it doesn't explain how the buns help stop environmental damage or desertification. The buns are designed basically to reduce surface runoff. Because of the fact that it very often the ground can be baked very hard by the hot weather in the far desert, when it does rain, it's quite often that rain acts as surface runoff. Now that surface runoff is not great for uh, sort of for soil erosion. It naturally takes any loose soil on the surface uh, down the slope with it, washing it away, therefore reducing the ability for crops to grow. As a result, we have this problem that we've already discussed. The idea of the buns is it means the water will start to pool up on the upslope or uphill side of the bund. If it starts to pull up, it will then give it time to actually slowly infiltrate into the soil. And when that water infiltrates into the soil, it increases its soil moisture levels. That again, that naturally means it's harder for it to be blown around away by the wind and harder for it to be eroded. And because of the fact that the soil moisture levels rise, crops can start to grow uphill of the bund. Okay, this obviously is fantastically good for farmers 
you've built the bond in the first place. So if we put another advantage on here, increase its infiltration, which equals increased crops or crop yields. However, there is also going to be a disadvantage. Okay? And that disadvantage is going to happen downslope. What's going to happen is that water that may naturally, at one point, have flown down slope until the slope sort of leveled off and then started to infiltrate into the flatter ground at the bo bottom of the valley. Now it's being caught uh, kind of uphill by the bund. It's a bit like when we talk about groins and longshore drift. The groins stop moving the sediment down the coast and therefore provide great protection for the place with the groins but maybe have a negative impact on somewhere down coast. Same idea with the bunds here. As that water infiltrates into the soil here and provides benefits to the person uphill of the bund, maybe the farmer down slope of the bund is obviously going to have a problem because his soil moisture is suddenly going to go down massively. As a result of that, a pretty logical explanation is that his crops are going to start to die. So, you know, as a negative, they do cause problems down slope. So, if buns aren't that effective, what about shelter belts? Okay. Shelter belts are basically lines of trees that have been genetically designed to be able to survive in desert environments. They don't need a huge amount of water, and they can be planted in areas where there's large amounts of soil erosion. There's two benefits to this. Firstly, the roots of those trees are going to help bind the soil together. So, if we put roots, bind soil... Secondly, they're going to provide shade. Again, that shade is going to increase soil moisture. It's going to prevent it from being evaporated as quickly. Again, we know that if you increase soil moisture, you reduce soil erosion. Therefore, you reduce the risk of desertification. And simply, the trees act like a bit of a windbreak. So you've got strong winds coming in here, but down kind of at lower levels, the winds are going to be much, much softer. So they're going to reduce wind erosion. On top of that, there's huge other benefits. Firstly, the shade that we talked about provides an area for crops to grow and they won't dry out, so farmers can plant crops on the trees. And you see that quite often in areas where shelter belts have been, have been planted. Also, the trees have been designed to grow uh, fruit on them, a particular type of plum that can be sold at market. So not only are they providing uh, somewhere to farm, to farm, they're also providing that sort of barrier against the wind and soil erosion but also providing an economic benefit an economic asset that the farmers can sell however there is a major problem the trees that are used for these shelter belts have been genetically modified to survive in the conditions okay, they are designed to be as sort of perfect for the far desert conditions as they can be and what we see as a result is as they actually start to outcompete native species so things like the Joshua tree these trees that are native, native there have been outcompeted by these shelter belt trees. And we start to see a problem that we refer to as monoculture. Okay. Where only one, spe one species survives or dominates in an area due to the fact that it's able to outcompete its rivals.